For most of the 20th century, America's leaders saw the need to help the elderly afford medical care. President Eisenhower championed legislation. It became known as Medicare. Later, President Kennedy fought for it. President Johnson finally signed the Medicare bill into law, and every American president since has worked somehow to protect, improve, or strengthen Medicare. The social safety net of programs they depend on are exempt from any cuts. Medicare will not be cut. After all, generations of Americans have relied on Medicare for half a century. But there are those who prey upon it. Billing Medicare for services they never provided or patients didn't need. The government says that con artists are draining the lifeblood out of it by filing millions of dollars in phony claims. At the center of one such Medicare scheme, Mitt Romney. It's a story of fraud, a story of big profits, big lies, and at the time, the biggest criminal fine for healthcare fraud ever levied in Massachusetts history. The company was Damon Clinical Laboratories. In 1989, Mitt Romney's company led a takeover of the medical testing outfit. Romney would manage the company and serve on its board of directors. Under Romney's direction, the company was making huge profits. But as Forbes magazine reported, Romney was supervising a medical testing company guilty of massive Medicare fraud. At a time when money is tighter than ever, this kind of fraud is costing Americans as much as $90 billion a year. The company was misleading doctors, ordering complex and unnecessary blood tests, not disclosing to doctors that Damon Corporation was billing Medicare at a much higher rate for each unnecessary test. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office, under Romney, the number of tests billed to Medicare on an annual basis skyrocketed. Medicare paid more than $16 million for unnecessary iron deficiency tests alone. But it didn't stop there. Romney's company was ordering unnecessary blood tests for coronary artery disease. In order to ensure doctors wouldn't complain, the company made it difficult for them to receive a coronary risk profile for patients if they didn't go along. For busy doctors caring for their patients, there was little choice. The tests were ordered and the Damon Corporation would issue another fraudulent bill to Medicare. We've got to attack the rampant fraud that exists in numerous government programs. The illegal activity was happening right under Romney's nose. Romney kept a watchful eye on profits, while tens of millions of dollars in illegal Medicare money flowed through the door. One of the ways I'll do that is by enact enacting far stiffer penalties for those who steal from taxpayers. But under Romney, Damon Corporation was the one stealing from taxpayers. The scheme wasn't going completely unnoticed. A task force of federal officials had launched Operation Lab Scam to investigate clinical laboratories who they suspected of fraudulent Medicare billing. Squarely in their sights, Mitt Romney's Damon Corporation. It is unclear whether Mitt Romney was aware of Operation Lab Scam, but his timing in 1993 is suspicious. While federal agents under the U.S. Attorney's Office were busy closing in on Damon Corporation, Romney was busy orchestrating a sale of Damon to Corning. Finally, a seven-page subpoena was served on the Damon Corporate Headquarters on August 24, 1993. In an incredible coincidence shown in SEC filings, Romney's company sold Damon to Corning in August 1993. At the very same time, the Fed subpoena was issued. Two whistleblowers came forward under Corning and Medicare fraud charges were brought. The systemic fraud under Romney's reign finally ended. The Boston Globe reported Romney was completely unaware of any investigation. But later, Romney changed his story claiming that he helped uncover the fraud and the illegal activity, asking the board's lawyers to investigate, saying the board took corrective action.
But both federal investigators and Corning rebuffed Romney's claims, stating that Corning stopped the fraud, not Mitt Romney. In fact, Romney never reported the fraudulent Medicare activities to authorities. In 1996, the Damon Corporation pled guilty to defrauding Medicare. Damon was ordered to pay the U.S. government $119 million to resolve all federal and Medicaid criminal and civil claims. The government said the settlement covered literally millions of fraudulent claims. At the time, it was the largest criminal fine for healthcare fraud ever levied in Massachusetts history. Incredibly, when Romney's firm orchestrated a sale of Damon Corporation to Corning Incorporated, it tripled its investment, walking away with a $12 million profit. The Boston Globe reports Romney personally pocketed a half million dollars from the deal. In a now familiar Mitt Romney refrain, thousands lost their jobs and the company went bankrupt. Cost to American taxpayers, the Boston Globe put the figure at nearly $40 million. Just 10 years later, no one might suspect Mitt Romney had been at the center of one of the greatest Medicare frauds of the 1990s. I can't wait to get my hands on Washington. One longtime reporter for the Boston Globe and co-author of the new biography, The Real Romney, put it this way. I, I certainly think that there's reason to, to question, if you're looking at sort of who he is politically, sort of what he really is in, inside. Even more troubling, Romney denies his business ever had any dealings at all with Medicare. Did, did you know Bain what? ever you do any work with any company which did any work with the government like Medicare? We, did, we didn't, do any, Medicaid we didn't do any work with the government. There are a lot of reasons not to elect me. Winning our future is responsible for the content of this message.